I'm nervous. What the, whoa, whoa, what this is. What we're doing? I don't, I don't know what he's, is this, is this slow? Oh, he's doing a slow motion handshake from, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I'm like, I'm waiting, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. He's so lost. He's like, what is going wait, on? I've been watching, I've been watching it. <laughs> the players been getting everybody with that. <laughs> Welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Pierce Simpson. On today's episode, of course, we'll talk about the national championship game that took place last night and the new class of Hall of Fame members of the James Naismith Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. But before we get started, I'm joined here by Complex Sports Editor, Mr. Adam Caparello. Cap, how you doing, man? Doing all right. We split last night. Yeah. <laughs> so you lost somebody? And then my future Arizona bet comes off the board. So, you know, a, a minor loss, but, but you all can things considered. You can recoup it in baseball, though, right? Day baseball today, yes. Oh, this guy here is something else. Uh, Next to Adam Caporell is Hall of Famer Terrell Owens. He joined us yesterday, but he's back again. Tio, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. You feeling good? I, I don't know about that Lakers hoodie, though. They not feeling too well right now. <laughs> I don't, they, you know. ugh, lottery. And next to Terrell Owens like, is, is Mr. Best Gilbert best Arenas. Right now. Right. <laughs> he saw he had the Lakers logo up top and spun it around to the west. Okay. Is this your home invasion swag right here? No, I'm, I got the same swag you got. We didn't get a haircut. Let's so, do it. Hey. So the foot on the oh my head. God, you know it. You know it. No haircut, hat go on. That's what hat, that is. That's exactly. What we ain't get no haircut. You go ahead, throw that up there. That's what it, you, it was like, let me find this beanie and just throw it on there. Now, as we mentioned previously, the national championship game took place last night, and the Villanova Wildcats won their second title in three years. So, of course, we're going to talk about whether or not Jay Wright should make the jump to the NBA. This is the pull-up. Well, it's uh, two national championships in three years. Villanova Wildcats took down the Michigan Wolverines last night, 79-62. Dante DiVincenzo went off for the Wildcats, scoring 31 points off the bench, which is a record. 10 of 15 from the field, 5 of 7 from three-point line. Uh, he got caught up in the news for some other things. He also went off on Twitter. Yeah, he went, yeah, yeah, back in the day. Uh, some problematic things that he said. But Villanova shooting from the field was incredible. Again, they had 18 three-pointers in the game against Kansas. Shot 37% last night. So with Jay Wright securing yet another national title, for the Villanova Wildcats, should he make the jump to the NBA? Gil, as you're smiling. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> College coaches don't do well in the NBA because they're, they're so used to controlling mm -hmm. you know, their environment. In the, in the NBA locker room, they're not the big dicks there. They're just the, the balls just dragging along in that locker room. They have no authority. So, as he phrased it as the big dicks, <laughs> T.O., what, 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 what do you think about Jay Wright's potential to go to the NBA? In an eloquent way, as it was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think you've seen enough success, you know, for, for guys that have gone from the college to the pros. I yeah. mean, you saw what Nick Saban tried to do with football. I mean, yeah. great college career. Then he jumped to the Miami Dolphins. That didn't work out so well. But then he jumped right back to where he fit. You know, exactly. I think, you know, that's a culture where he can thrive in. So, again, like I said, you know, we don't know. You see what the Florida coach has done over at OKC. Yeah. I mean, you got to have the talent to make that, that jump as well. Oh, the talent are an impending scandal that might be coming your way. Shout out to Pete Carroll. He's, he's all getting <laughs> hot. He's like, I'm going to Seattle. Uh, Cap with, with Jay. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you, have, you, have to, you have to be a people's person, you know, as a coach. You have to be, you have to be understanding. You have to be a player's coach. Player's yeah. coach, yeah. But do you think it's that or is the fact that they have to kind of relinquish control whenever they get to the professional? But that's what I said. You have to be a player's coach. You have to understand that, you know, college, they listen to you. Yeah. In the pros, you have to listen to them. Right, because you, look, you think about the college, in the college ranks, you're teaching fundamentals, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're teaching those kids how to play the sport. When right. you get to the pros, they kind of already know how to play, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's, you, you try to take a little bit of that teaching element out of it, and then like you said, you have to be a player's coach. You have to understand who your, who your players are. So are you just managing egos? In the professional in a sense, babysitting, yeah. yeah, in a uh -huh. sense, just yeah. babysitting is like, hey, <laughs> you good today? You all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you know, if you look at in high school, you have those star players, and that's yeah. how those star players thrive because those coaches know that their jobs are on the line, and they know who to put, whose ball, whose hands to put those balls oh, in. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Just know that there will be cut up later. <laughs> 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 it was so funny. Balls in your hands. He was. 
<laughs> he don't know the legal. Like you just say pause. Just say pause. <laughs> right. Yeah. You get away with no, it. Hold on. Please edit, 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 edit. <laughs> Pause. Yeah. So Cap, there's always been this growing consistency that John Calipari or Mike Krzyzewski is the top are the top two elite coaches in college basketball. Is Jay Wright making the case to be the top dog? He has to be up there because now he's one of the few coaches that have two national titles at yeah. one school. Um, I could very easily see the Knicks throwing a bag <laughs> towards Jay Wright because Jeff Hornacek probably won't be back with the Knicks. Probably. And this no, would be, be typical Knicks just throwing stupid money at a coach that doesn't belong there because Jay Wright should in no way, shape, or form leave Villanova. At all. He's got it made there. He's making a shit ton of money. Yeah. He's got one yeah. of the best programs. He's from Philadelphia. He's an Eagles fan. Like, his wife went to the school. Like, he is the guy at Villanova. There's no reason why for him to go anywhere. Yeah. I, I, think, I think college coaches go to the pros just so they can get that under their belt. For recruiting. Or do you think it's because they get bored? Like, Billy Donovan was at Florida for years. He won two titles. Like, let me just try something else for the no, hell. No, I think they go. I think they go up. You know, if they have success, it's like, okay, I did it. If not, they can always get a job back in college. Now they have, I was an NFL coach. Yeah, I have it on the resume. That was on the resume. Uh, T.O., you, you played in Philly for a couple of years. You know what that fan base is like. You know what that city is like. For Jay Wright to do the things that he's doing, being a homegrown guy, what do you think it's like for him whenever he's in the city? Is this nothing but love? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, those fans are passionate. I mean, when I played there, like I said, I never knew the culture of Philly until I actually was there. Um, then when I left, again, like I said, I never knew how much they, how much, how much love they had for me. Right. So again, like I said, if you're in that city and you're being successful, like I said, why mess something up? Yo, let's run it down. So, so, so far through 2018. Philadelphia Eagles won a Super Bowl. Villanova Wildcats won a national title. And uh, the Sixers are finally a competent team. So yeah, but Meek Mill's still locked up. <clears throat> very true. That's, Three out of four right now. That's, you know, that's also, I'm very disappointed in Philly last night. There wasn't the riding that I expected. You wanted a riot? I mean, they won a championship. <laughs> also, no, no, one ate, no one ate horse shit. No one was jumping off the awning of the, uh, or the Ritz-Carlton. No one was proposing to their girlfriend with a 40 of malt liquor on the side. There was, there was nowhere the shenanigans that we saw after the Philadelphia I, mean, because, I think because they expected to win, so <laughs> yeah, it was like more fly. Point, yeah, when good. the Eagles won, they were like, we're going nuts. The Eagles, yeah. Because the Eagles are supposed to win. They're flying so. high over, over there yeah. in Philly land. You know, here it's like, oh, we're classy. This <laughs> we already know we won this one. Do we? Um, so Villanova has a... A diverse group of team, uh, not team, but a diverse group of players that includes freshmen, sophomores, seniors. Do you think them winning a national title would change the course of what we think of one and done players and teams trying to build their roster with one and done guys? No, I just, you know, with one and done, it's kind of weird because you have to be a certain type of coach. You have to have a, cer- a certain type of system yeah. for a one and done. You got to remember, one and done is a very a very gifted individual. Yeah. You can't put him in like a Princeton type of offense. You got to let him. You got to let him thrive. So your offense, your system has to be made for him. And that's where you know the Kentuckys kind of like Coach Cal with the dribble yeah, drive yeah. or the one four flat. Okay. You know now you see Duke. You know getting a bunch of those ones and dones. <laughs> that, remember yeah. he said he wasn't going to do that. But yeah, exactly. You saw. Up. I mean, Jay Wright's <laughs> never had that. You know. Uh, track record of doing that but coach k didn't either and he's kind of changed his ways over the past five years so maybe at some point if stuff needs to change up and the and the culture of college basketball changes jay wright could go down that you know that route but it's working really well for him right now yeah i also he has nba players on that roster yeah i mean he clowned on a little bit but like there are nba players on that roster he's gonna get nba players he's gonna get nba quality type of players maybe not the top three players four five six who who has to do two years he'll get those we got to ask you one question, though, because you played in a national championship game, and someone brought this to our attention last night on Twitter that you really? were kind of wild, not wilding out, but there was, you have a notoriety of how you behaved uh, at the end of a championship game between Duke and Arizona. Oh, Bay. I'm nervous to see this. Look, he, look, he's there. What'd I do? <laughs> I didn't let's, shake, bring up, let's bring up the tweet, yes. I didn't shake hands? Yes. Like, let's like bring he, up the tweet. What the fuck I would have shaked them snobby motherfuckers hands. The the tweet the the offending tweet talked about how you avoided shaking hands with the Duke Blue Devils at the end of the game. You took off your jersey and just left the court. Why did you not shake hands with the Duke players at the end of the game? Why am I gonna shake the fuckers who just beat us? You, they lost. I don't want to shake your fucking hand. All right. Are you serious? Uh, let me read the tweet for everybody. All right, so this came from a user last night directed, and then it got brought to our attention. It said, nice thing about ending of the Nova-Michigan game was traditional post-game handshake line. Usually winning teams is in a jubilant pile. Losing teams quickly walks off the floor in disgust. Never will forget Arizona's Gilbert Arenas taking off jersey as he walked off in 2001 loss to Duke. Hey, hey, look. I was like... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. For, you got the jersey thing taken one, off, right? You did that in the league. Yeah, so. one, we got cheated the fuck out of in that game. What do you How? Foul calls? Foul calls. It was like 22, 23 missed calls that they should have called. Like, so Jason rest- Williams should have been fouled out. Dunleavy, like, it was really bad. So it was rigged. I don't want to say rigged. <laughs> I don't want to go that far. But they fucked us. So let's okay. just say that. <laughs> so do, the Blue Devils, we didn't really. It was just, it was just beef. It was what, real what was beef. The final score. And I, I think we lost by like nine, maybe. But I, I, I had a soft tissue tear in my, my chest, so I was, I was actually injured, and I'm playing only because of the championship game. But they cheated us. But it's, it's funny on that tweet. And I, I don't want to shake their hands. But why did he mention? <laughs> <laughs> but why did he mention? He said Arizona's Gilbert Arenas. Yes. Like you didn't play the league for ten years, or you had nothing else after that. He must have been a Duke fan. He had to be a Duke. And it just that just stuck in their head. I wasn't shaking their hands. I didn't even shake my. When Dunleavy was on <laughs> to go to State Warriors, I wouldn't shake his hand. <laughs> it's like, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> well, yes. Shout out to I Dino's. still see Duke in you. Yo. Shout out to Dino Strigonis for bringing it to our attention. We had to get the story out there, but yes. Yeah. That, that was, Not surprised to hear about this. That was, a, that, that was a bad one, losing to them, because me and Dunleavy played on the same AAU team, and we were always camped together. Like We always asked for each other, so... From ninth grade to our senior year, we were together. Then he beats me in college. And then we draft him. Oh! <laughs> and that's is that game where your hatred of Coach K began? Yep. Yeah. And then it continued. Starting point, yes. Yep. Later on. It's continued. Yep. And and the next 17 years. <laughs> and now you want to uh, have him investigated by the NCAA. Oh, no, no, no. He needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he needs to be. He's dirty. Trust me. <laughs> Bagley, you done fucked him. <laughs> They're all yeah. dirty. That is That is hilarious. <laughs> Now, we talked about the national championship game and some players that won the national championship and included in this year's Pro Basketball Hall of Fame include a number of national championship winners. On Saturday, a press conference prior to the NCAA Men's Final Four in San Antonio dedicated 13-member 2018 Hall of Fame class that was highlighted by players such as Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, Ray Allen, Grant Hill, Mo Cheeks, and notable players left off Chris Webber and Coach Rudy Tomjanovich, who won two titles with the Houston Rockets during the mid-1990s. Uh, fellas, it's pretty cool that you have Jason Kidd and Grant Hill in the same Hall of Fame class. Mind you, they were co-rookies of the year. This, he kind of rolls his eyes. It's like giving some type of feedback. <laughs> what do we think of this 13-member uh, 2018 Pro Basketball Hall of Fame class? I know I, who you're going to slander first. Get I'm out. not going to slander. <laughs> I just want to know, like, what is, what is the criteria? Is it just being a pro, being... Well, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame encompasses all your basketball. So you're talking college. If you're a European player, you played overseas, like, you know, in, in the Chinese leagues, like it encompasses your entire basketball career. So the criteria is kind of broad. Yeah, very Because my question is, okay, two players. Here we go. It's Ray Allen and Grant Hill. You have a problem. You don't think both of them should be in the Hall of Fame? I, I think longevity gets them there. Is this, Ray, is this Ray cooking you right now? No. Oh, how about He played for the Sonics. No. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Can we put that picture back up real quick? Real quick. Can we put that picture back up? Because look at your defensive stance. What is that, Gil? I don't know. I was probably recovering. <laughs> Who knows? I guarantee. He's I like, cook. give me the rock on the I back. guarantee I cooked that night, though. <laughs> now, so, okay, so like with somebody with Ray. He's a 10-time All-Star. Yeah. Played, what, 20 years? Just about. I think 19, but yeah. 19 years, but he was an All-NBA player two times in his career. You're not going to count that second-team All-Rookie? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but that, that's like, as a, as a player, that stands out to me. Like, so you're good enough to make the All-Star team, yeah. but you're not dominant enough to be top 15 player. Well, but, you're top 25 player if you're making an All-Star team. All-st- you're not All-Star. a top 15 player. Yeah, your top 25 all-star or coaches voting or whatever they want to get you in, but you're not top 15, not even in your prime. That means you're not a top 15 player. That means you're not dominating. But he played in the West for a majority of his prime. He's not going to overtake Kobe in the all-NBA team, but I guess he could do second or third team. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm saying. You're you're good enough to – and that was my thing. Like, that's what stood out. Same thing with Grant Hill. You're like, you know, seven-year all-star – just one all NBA team. Well, we like, know why Grant. You Hill guys is played it? 18, 19 years, and you guys, it's like your numbers combined is what you know got you to hold. They didn't make that not, impact. That not your impact. impact. Yeah, right. not your impact as a player. Grant Hill's in because he won two titles <clears throat> at Duke. Yeah, his college career is what is what oh. gets him in there for sure. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Team. Like I mean, what's funny is like I didn't. You know, I had to look at assassin. I see Grant Hill. 
played all the way to 2013. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like when I was in at 2004, five, I thought he was on the way out of the NBA, and it's like he had a better, <laughs> he had a better from 30 to 40 career than he did yeah. in his younger career. But that's what I'm saying. It's the longevity of 19, 18 years. You're you're picking up these stats, and you know Ray Allen made an All Star game with averaging 17, 16, like. Yeah, but he's the all-time leader in three-point field goals made in the NBA. That's like if Reggie if Reggie Miller's in the Hall of Fame, why it, wasn't Ray? Okay, this is Kevin Love. Whoa! Wow! Why? Why? No, Ray has you say two Ray titles. Allen's Kevin Love. Ray won two championships. <laughs> when, he's also top six he all-time was, in free throw percentage. He averaged two championships later in his career. Who cares when you win? Kevin Love has he was, won. Was he not a he's vital a, part of those two championship teams? He hit one big shot coming off the bench. If you don't Miami. hit the shot, they don't win the title. Yeah, but true. what? But that makes sure that's an iconic that make, shot. But that he had an iconic that, 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 that stamps you as a an amazing player. It if you play almost resume. twenty years in the league, you okay. end up being Kevin the Love. I just said it. He's a three time All NBA player right now. Three time All NBA player. If he wins two more championships and plays another ten years, never dominates. He's a Hall of Famer. All right, so let me ask you this question: What category is Kevin Love going to uh, end up leading when he retires? Doesn't matter. How does that matter? He will have about That's two. That's part of the resume. Right he will now. have about two or three championships. He'd be a five-time All NBA player, about ten All Star games, played twenty years. His numbers will make him a Hall of Famer. Is Ray Allen a Hall of Famer? I mean, I think he, I think he makes himself uh, a great candidate, which obviously he is. And I think, like I said, the championships, and I think when you think about imprint or impact in the game, again, I think everybody remembers that that one shot. I mean, he's dominating. It's an iconic moment. Yeah, it's an iconic moment. And then, and then the fact that, again, again. I think he scored five that night. But, he's, but, <laughs> well, but if you don't hit that shot, right, you don't win the title. You don't win the title. You don't win the title. If you're on that team... <laughs> If you're on that team and he hits that shot, are you not excited? Are you yes, not I'm happy? excited, but I'm just thinking about because I played in in this era, and and I'm like I don't even rem- I remember Ray Allen, but I don't remember him being a dominant player. Like, but you remember him? Being oh, like, yeah, we, yeah, like oh, oh, Ray made the All Star team. That's you know that's what it was. Oh, Ray, Ray, right, I get Ray made. You didn't consider him one of the again top twenty five players. No, he league? wasn't. A, that's what I said. He wasn't a lethal player. No, I, I get what he's saying. You don't really think of Ray as a dominant player early in his career. Yeah, he was dunking above the rim and all that stuff. But then later in his career, like you said, he but was, later in his career it was 25. <laughs> 25, 26. <laughs> right, but I mean, you know him from shooting threes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's what he's what he's trying to convey it's, here is that it's like in his prime he got t- he in his prime. He got take. He already got taken out of the All Star rotation or the All NBA as a dominant player. You know, me, um, D Wade. We're already yeah. in his spot. You know, and that's oh, what yeah. I and that's what I remember. Like, yeah. like, oh, okay, Ray. And then I just look at the longevity. And then when it comes to, but this is all. This this could also be just the pool of the class of people that were nominated. Like I don't really know the whole. No, entire yeah, list. it matters when you retire because you're five years. You're right, eligible, exactly. And, you know, so again, depends on who you. You got to put somebody. I mean, that's what I said. I mean, he has a better. Guy. He has a better argument than uh, let's say Grant Hill. So, so who do we feel like sh- who's eligible should be in the Hall of Fame right now? Who do we feel? I want to. I want to kick guys out of the Hall of Fame. What about is, Mar- is Marbury? Eligible? Is Marbury eligible? You think Marbury's a, a Hall of Famer? I think so. I think if you're gonna argue with a every, Chinese career, he just retired. But it, even it even without his Chinese career, I mean, the guy damn near averaged twenty and ten his whole career. Well, he was twenty and eight for a while, but yeah. also he flamed up pretty quickly. Yeah, and he couldn't finish with his left hand. But that's. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. He also ate bass. But, was, but yeah. the sad part is that's where he was gonna go. Yeah, he's gonna fake that screen, go left. <laughs> See, me personally, I think that you have a great case to be a Hall of Famer once you're uh, eligible. You don't think so personally, but I definitely think I'm, so. I'm already eligible. Oh, you're already eligible? Yeah. Okay, well, we're making a case here out of bounds that you need to be a Hall of Famer. One. Yeah, he's going to make that case. I'm going to make that case right now. Uh, you and, you were so sure about it. You, he had uh, you stretching uh, your hair earlier. Like, man, you about to get okay. killed on. You about to get <laughs> okay. killed. Okay. <laughs> right. The line of demarcation I usually say is 30 points per game. Not a lot of players in NBA history have ever averaged 30 points per game in a season. You're in categories with, like, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. You didn't do it consecutive seasons, but you had 29. You were right knocking season. on the door. You're knocking that's on the door. That's, 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 that's pretty much right I'm there. I'm going to be honest with you. I was a killer. You was, right. I, I killed. Three-time but it was NBA All-Star. It, but Three-time it was, All-NBA. That was All-NBA. it. That was but, it. Listen. That was it. I got, I got hurt. Three-time All-NBA. No, I'm still, no, no, no. I'm, 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 
I'm top fifth. I, I dominated more than Ray Allen and Grant Hill. You have the same number of all NBA teams as Steve Martin. Nash. Yeah, because you know Steve Nash. And two of those years, he had to be on there because he won MVP. Yeah, he didn't develop a, until a little later, bit later, later, later in his career. career. Yep. So, but that's what I said. That's what Steve Nash developed later in his career. Ray, Grant Hill for sure. And also too, I I I give I give credence and to the fact that you ushered in a generation of shoot first point guards. You would have thrived in this era. You ushered I in. I thrived in my era. You did. Okay. But in but you know the but, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know the knock though. There was always a knock it was like, oh, he's a shoot first point guard. We don't know if we need him on this team. Now all they want is shoot first point guards. Mm-hmm. So all I'm saying you know is give thought, yourself more. You know credit. who I thought should have made it, and then I really dove into his who? Chris Webber. <laughs> <laughs> no, like when you think Chris Webber, you're like, okay, yeah, you think of the battling thing. with the Shaq and watching him, and you know, you 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 have those great great uh, Sacramento teams where he was on, and I'm like, oh yeah, Chris Webber is for sure 20 and 20. And then I looked, and I said, whoa, he flamed out so fast. Right, it was like yeah. four years straight MVP dominance, and then as soon as he hit 30, he was out of the league at 34. Like, wait, what? 14.6%. Ooh. But when you, when you hear the name, I, th- I think when we hear names, we just... It's like T.O. said, we think about Fab, fab Five. five yeah. Fab Five. Um, and then as you said, too, like, when, you, when he started out, he was on fire. But then later on in his career, like I said, obviously I'm sure that was due to injury. Yeah. Again, again, he just kind of, he went on a decline. Yeah, it was like, a, it was like soon as, you know, it was like 26 to 30, all-star, prime. 30 to 34, right. Right. not existing. But I think that was obviously, I think, due to injury, though. Would you not... I don't know. Did we you gonna injury? say injury? <laughs> you have to though, right? Yeah. Just, what injury? I just didn't. Wasn't it the knee? The, 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 the micro yeah, 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 But no, right. I mean, yes, you can yeah, weigh. Right, you can right, definitely right. weigh yeah. the college career because freshman sophomore year, he got Michigan, helped get Michigan to the NCAA championship right, game. Yeah. And obviously, we talked yesterday about the you know influence that the Fab Five had. So right. Like, exactly. You're gonna weigh that a little bit more, but his pro career. Yeah. Right. Fourteen point six percent chance of actually being a Hall of Famer. To when whenever a player makes the Hall of Fame, what does that validation feel like? Is it just like a culmination? Like, okay, this all came together. I'm a Hall of Famer. You can't tell me anything. Well, I think you know. I think with the NBA and the NFL, it's it's a bit different. Yeah. Um, different. Um, again, I think with me, my situation, like I said, my stats. When you ramble off my stats versus everybody else, then I should have been a first ballot. Although I went through the Hall of Fame, it doesn't designate or say on the plaque, okay, first, second, third, whenever it is. But it's, it's just the fact that the process in which guys are in, you know, nominated and ultimately inducted, it's, it's a different system. Because, again, like I said, they're bringing, in terms of me, they brought up other cases as to why I shouldn't be in. They were th- bringing up character issues and things of that nature. You look at the, the NBA, like I said, Alan is my guy. Like I said, not to say he had character issues, but they left – what the Hall of Fame is supposed to be about was on the court. Yeah. Things that happen mm-hmm. within. They never held that stuff over his head. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's where you see the difference in, 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 both, in, in both sports. Uh, again, like I said, you look at the guys that are ultimately nominated and then inducted, I think it's, it's, it's done rightfully so. And I think there's justice behind that. With the NFL, I think it's a lot of politics behind it. 1,000%. And when you, when is you Christian like, Lake a Hall of Famer? Yeah, I think so. I think he just uh, got in recently, right? I think because of, I mean, well, college, yes, he was an see, awesome college see, that, but player. See, also, think, he played in the Dream Team. He played in the 9-2 Dream Team. All right, we get that. <laughs> no, no, he was my teammate. No, no, no. no. no Tell me no. something I don't know. No, no. <laughs> He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> see, so like football, like you, it's just football. Basketball, you, you're talking about college, overseas, NBA. I mean, so you can be mediocre through all of these sports and actually be a Hall of Famer. So Le- Leitner is so, only college basketball Hall of Famer. Yeah, that, so he's college basketball yeah, Hall college of Famer. Basketball. Okay. Yeah. It's just weird. Better. It's like you can bring in all this other shit that has nothing to do with your pro level. Yeah. But if he had a more respectful pro career, he could have made it to the Naismith Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, so when, I, you, when you start getting on the ballot for being a Hall of Famer. I was on the ballot. Boom. I think I. Jesus, I how are you going to give a hand wave to you your You can't cohort? get back on. I, Gil, no, I think I'm on the ballot. I, I was on. I, I think I got nominated with. Uh, I'm leading the parade. Gilbert Arenas Hall of Fame. Was it Baron Davis? I think I was in that. I don't know. Listen. So do Gil, you not? Gil, no Gil, distance. Be I, I remember. I remember. I snapped it on T. Like, oh shit. <laughs> Gil, <laughs> notable mention. <laughs> That's love, the closest I'm gonna get. We love you to death here. But the Hall of Fame nod? Hey, hey, trust me. It's a trust me. You ain't got a nod. I've been nodded that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I've been nodded he's, that. He's self-nodded. Yeah, I self-nodded that one. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, I'm realistic, okay? <laughs> That's a good way to be. But to answer your question, I think, yeah, you do feel some type, some, some, some type of way. I mean, yeah. there's some gratification. It's like you're at the top of the hill. Like you can't, I mean, 
you don't get any better than that. Yeah. As I said, I think football is different than basketball. Right. Yeah, it's it more is. Politics it's, involved. It's so much, but yeah. it's more it's straight attributes in football. Like just there's no college. They don't. No, they don't take. Yeah, they don't take any of that into account. Yeah, yeah. They they just watch. In T.O.'s case, they barely take your own field stuff at the time <laughs> in, in the NFL. They like, exactly. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. All right. Speaking of football, Jim Moore has surprisingly taken some shots at his former quarterback, the millennial Josh Rosen. Time to judge whether that's fair or foul. All right. So in an interview with Monday Morning Quarterbacks, Peter King, Jim Moore, the former UCLA football coach, kind of flamed Rosen, uh, who's expected to be one of the top quarterbacks taken in the draft next month or this later this month, I should say, um, and millennials in general. So after saying that he thinks Rosen is still the number one quarterback in the draft and a franchise changer, Moore told King, quote, he needs to be challenged intellectually so he doesn't get bored. He's a millennial. He wants to know why. Millennials, once they know why, they're good. Josh has a lot of interest in life. If you can hold his concentration level and focus only on football for a few years, he will set the world on fire. He has so much ability, and he's a really good kid. Um, remember about a week ago, Moore told the NFL Network that the Browns should take Sam Darnold, UCLA's rival, USC quarterback number one overall, because he'd be the better fit for the blue-collar, hard-working nature of you know, the Cleveland fans and whatnot. So um, are we going to call fair or foul on Moore criticizing basically – his quarterback, his former quarterback, Josh Rosen. I'm calling foul. Like, bro, like, give it a rest. Like, relax, dog. You got fired. Let it go. You're obviously <laughs> taking shots yeah. at me. Let me go make my money. You've made your money. You've worn out your welcome in Atlanta. Uh, I believe Seattle. Now UCLA. Bro, it's you. Stop it. Stop calling me millennial. Stop saying I got to sh- Just let me get drafted. Let me make my living. Leave me alone. It comes off a little petty. I kind of agree with you there. What do you think, T.O.? Uh... I look at it a little different. I don't. Really? I don't see it as a slight. I think when you when you when he assessed Sam Darnold versus you know Josh Rosen based on where he may fit. Um, like I said, I don't. I didn't really. I think he was being matter of fact, yeah. not the fact that he was. You know, again, when you talk about him coaching Josh Rosen for the years that he did, again, you try to assess where he may better better fit for a team. That's where he assessing, he's assessing the talent. And like I said, he went, th- went through it. He's like, yeah, he has so much ability. He's a really good kid. But he's looking at the development of where he is right now and where he could be. So I don't really take it as a, as a slight, but more as a ma- matter of fact, yeah. to be honest. I mean, maybe trying to deflect for, you know, Rosen going to a place he doesn't want to go in Cleveland. Again, like yeah, I said, I, you want to go. Like I said, you don't want to go. Again, he hasn't. And, I, and I, just last week I threw, uh, I was at the UCLA campus working out and I ran some routes for, for, for Josh. He was working out for the, for the Browns. And what I saw is that he wasn't really there yet. So he's going to take some years to kind of get groomed to really get to the point of where the Browns need to be. They need a quarterback that can come in and play right now. Based on what I've read with his assessment of Josh, he's not ready to be that guy at this moment. So you think he should sit his first year? I, there's going to be yeah, – he needs to learn a little bit more, understand, obviously, when to put touch on ball, velocity, all that stuff. Or so, go to a better organization, like maybe learn under Eli Manning with the Giants. Right, exactly. So that's where, like I said, me understanding the game and understand Jim Moore is not really – like I said, I don't really – I didn't take it as a slight, but more as he needs a little bit more development. So fair or foul for you? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> About to get on the roller coaster. <laughs> I think it's fair. Why? Or foul. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no, no. I just no, like no, Josh because no, no, no. he's unfiltered. I just like the unfiltered guy. Yeah, and there's nothing that, wrong that, with like, said, him like. being a like millennial. That he has a personality. Yeah, with him being you a know? millennial, I don't really think that has anything I, to I, do I, with no, he, I mean, Moore praised in this interview, he praised <laughs> Rose and, like, highly. Um, but yeah. also, J- Peter King reported that uh, Moore sent an explanato- explanatory text to Josh Rosen after those comments oh, came out. Oh, too late now. But supposedly, King's reporting that Rosen's still shocked and stunned by what Moore had to say publicly. So it's I like mean, it's there's got to be some mending. It's the, it's the Laura Ingram effect. You know, all these coaches are basically. Oh, what do you mean? The Laura Ingram You know, to shut movies? up and oh, just yeah, play yeah, your yeah, yeah. sport. It's, the, it's that effect. Hey, that was a good segue. I like that one. You're not going to let me hang out. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's one of those where, you know, these, these coaches are just, they're not understanding. I have social media, yeah. and I'm going to use it. Yeah. I don't have to just sit here and just take what I don't want to take. You know, if I have other interests, I'm going to I'm going to say it because I can be a basketball player, I can be a football player, and I can do other things too. But See, why is it? Yeah, why ahead. is it so bad for NFL players and football players to be free thinkers? Yeah, what like, is? Whenever it? you guys like are expressive yourselves and you're out there, like you get trashed for that by the hierarchy of the of football. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think with the NBA, I think the NBA understands that really the players is what make their game great. Mm -hmm. And I think with the NFL, the owners feel like there's no game without them. Um, and again, I think when you have all these platforms and I think guys are really taken uh, to heart, then yeah, they, they can be free, free thinkers, uh, freedom of speech. Um, this is the era that we're in. And I like where we are um, as a country. I think players should speak out freely. Um, but I don't really know. I, I, I can't give you a definitive answer on. Still, the culture of football but, has yeah, changed. Yeah, exactly. You so with 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 the NBA, because there's 13 players, one star player gone hurts your franchise. Yeah. So you trade the wrong piece, you're done for five, six, seven years. In football, they don't care. You know, you have so many players on the field, one moving piece. Yeah, it might hurt. But they can keep moving. Yeah, but you know what piece you have to have? It's that quarterback. Quarterback. Right? You got to have a quarterback. Yeah. yeah. All right. Quick, quick sure. question before we transition. If you're taking, if you're the Browns, what quarterback are you taking? Between who? All of them. Between Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, even Baker Mayfield. I like that Josh Allen kid. Yeah. I got a, I got a bone to pick about Josh Allen. Shoot. I don't think the kid can play. He can launch the ball deep. But if you watch his pro day, he was he threw like eight deep balls, one connected. I mean, he was overthrowing yeah, people. Accuracy's been the biggest. Fifty six percent yeah. in the Mountain West, but his his talent. Right, but how many game, How many times are you throwing the ball deep during the course of the game? That can be taught. That that can be. I mean, you can you can teach a guy that. But here's the thing, T. You'd rather play with a quarterback that was accurate and could put the ball on you rather than a guy that can just chunk it deep. Right. Well, yeah, absolutely. Accuracy yeah. again. Those intermediate passes, timing, precision. Yeah. That's what really makes really makes a quarterback. That's what makes uh, guys like Peyton Manning, um, Aaron Rodgers, and you think about Tom Brady. That's what makes them special, especially in, in crunch times of the game. It's like you got to have a quarterback that kind of knows where they where they're going with the ball. They can dictate uh, the defense, and again, put the ball where it needs to be. So, what do you love about Allen so much? Um, again, like I said, I think you just look at the really the future of what he can be. I right. mean, you kind of see it past the eyeball like the raw test. talent you yeah, love you to be able to see, mold that. Right, exactly. Yeah, there's no question about his raw talent. The guy has uh, skills. He's, 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 he's a physical could, freak. Because if, you see, if, you, if you've noticed, like a lot of these guys that are projected to go high and play well, they don't really play particularly well. That's why now, like yeah, I said, you raw see, talent. Yeah, and you've seen some of these guys are being molded. You know, those are the ones that are, that are shiny. Just take Saquon number one. Take the best defender at four, and you got your squad. They need a quarterback now. They've they never figured it out, so why? why well, like, some, point, some point, <laughs> you have to get it right. I mean, you know, one, once every 20 years, you have to get it right. right? Jeez. Yeah. Once every 20 years. <laughs> All right, sticking with football. New Raiders coach John Gruden is trying to send a message by cutting Marquette King. So last Friday, the Raiders released a standout punter uh, in a move that cleared cap space. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Standout punter's not doing it for Yeah, me. I'm just saying, what? <laughs> All right, who? Stick with me here, stick with me here. So in a move that was supposed to be reportedly a clear cap space, uh, was also meant to send a message um, to players. The Raiders didn't provide a reason behind the actual move itself, but there are reports that John Gruden, who was bringing old-school mentality back to the Raiders, now that he's in the fold, wasn't feeling King's personality, who is known, obviously, for his antics punting the ball. He is one of the best punters in the league. I think he was, like, top three in terms of net average. Yeah. But um, a little shocking that the Raiders are going to this length to get rid of a guy that was popular and also one of the better guys at his job. Yeah, it's bizarre. I have... Uh, I, he was a receiver in college, right? D2? I, I think so. And then he's, a, like, he's an athlete. He's an athlete. He's an athlete. Yeah. Okay. Now, his antics does, you know, it gets I mean, but, I mean, you, you really want to be the coach that says, yeah, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to fire the punter. I'm going to cut the punter. <laughs> what? Yeah. You, yeah, I, think, I think Gruden does, though, because he's had the quote saying that he wants to throw the game back to 1998. Okay, and they're going to go 5-11. and 11. Exactly. It? And he also said that uh, – about, you know, analytics and um, incorporating new age thinking into his football strategy. He said, quote, not going to rely on GPSs and modern technology. Oh, goodness. So nice. that's, that's what the Raiders have going for them right now with John Gruden, who was signed to a 10-year, $100 million. See, the bad part about old thinking is, I, I don't know if for football, but basketball, like, yeah, you can be an alpha male. You have two options as a coach. Hmm. You know, follow your alpha male or try to take him out. Mm. You know, and he looks like that type of coach that'll try to, he wants to be the alpha male of the locker room. So he's going to take everybody out. So, so he, he wants to take everybody. everybody. He wants to, you know, show he has the, you know, the, the cojones. But can a coach do that in football? No. I mean, in basketball, I know, because at the end of the day, once I go on the floor, the players that, that's playing, we, we control it. 
So then eventually we're just going to exile you out. You're going to be a non-factor, and eventually you're going to get fired. You ask me, can he do that? Yeah. I mean, $100 million says he yeah. can do that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we got to pay him, yeah. But so but that, who is going to question him? See, and that's the problem. Who's going to question it? I mean, if he's in the owner's back pocket the way he is. I mean, is. only Marshawn Lynch, but he, he's, not, he's, not a, he's not a factor at this point as a star, star player to really put that pressure on the organization. That's what I'm saying. It's like LeBron James. If he tried to do that in Cleveland, ah, get out of here. Yeah. We're not listening to what you're talking How about. How much of that is, is just the fact that y'all just finances, y'all have guaranteed contracts? No, we, it, it, it has nothing to do with fi- uh, wasn't it? We have a team. Yeah. You know, so if I'm the, if I'm the star player, the team is going to follow me, the guy who's going to war with them every night, then someone who's just calling plays from the sideline. Yeah. Like, now nah, we're not listening to you right now. Yeah. You know, hey, he called one for something, we're calling something else. Fuck him. You know, like those movies where you see the hard head doing something different. Yeah, right. That's how it is in basketball. The coach can call something, we're going to call something different if we see something different. No, nah, not so much. He's so jealous. I mean, the quarterback. No, no, no. I mean, the quarterback. Well, of yeah, course, the yes, they have the ability to audible and do stuff, but you right. guys, it's different for you as the position right. players, the, you know. Because yeah. you guys go with the field and floor of the game. Field, yeah. The floor of the game. And that's how we play. What, yeah. So like, he gets, which, makes, said, which makes a like lot of gets, sense. Like, he gets, you got to remember, they play sometimes, coaches be coaching by their little book. And we're playing, and we say, "Oh, we have an advantage." Yeah. He calls some players, right? Like, oh, exactly. No, no, no. Go back to the, we're going. We're going to milk. We're going to milk Antoine until they switch. Yeah. The players, you know, we see that all the players, like, right. oh, they're hey, making, Brendan hasn't touched the ball one four five. They're making in-game the adjustments, yeah. Yeah. making it on the fly. So during your playing days, when you guys went to, uh, you know, to a new organization or maybe dealt with a new coach coming in, did you ever have them try to send a message and do something like Gruden just did, cutting the puncher like that? No, I don't. I don't understand the no, logic yeah. behind that. Me, me and I, me, again, I, I I don't get it. Especially, why would you cut some of your? Why would you cut one of your better players yeah. on the team? Especially when when field position plays a big part in in, in the league. So especially if you're going back to 1998 football. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just what you said. So when you think about what this guy brings to the game, he's best punter in the game right now like what sense does that make it's also but also your punter can't be getting you know personal flags and yeah personal uh kind of i mean that, that i mean that i mean that, that i mean with the bag you, yeah. know <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i mean me and eddie jordan when i first got to washington we bumped heads yeah um because my style of play and his playbook just didn't match right. you know i was but more fixed it me continuing doing the same thing i <laughs> we both just got there i'm on 65 million I got Larry Hughes with me. I got Kwame Brown with me. Yeah. It's like, no, we, either you're just going to bench us all, and he was trying. Oh, he was trying. <laughs> oh, he was trying. <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're going to bench us all, and we're going to lose. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's, that's on you. You're going to get fired faster yeah. than us. And then, you know, he started to realize, you know, I'm just going to take the, the less of the, the two evils. Yeah. I'm going to go with Gilbert <laughs> more than Larry because Larry's not going to listen to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> As, <laughs> oh, I got a special thing for you, though. For me? Yep. What? Rihanna. <laughs> What's happening? Is she back there? What? What you talking about? I got Rihanna to come on. Uh, stop it. Ray Ray. Don't play with me like that. Don't play with me like that. <laughs> <laughs> pass out on set. Uh, you man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but time out. Uh, hey, hey, you see I was like, you, hey, you see what's hilarious is when I, was, when I was about to move on, I had to beak real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. Hey, for fools, right. yo. <laughs> I just right. had to double check. But it's like T.O. mentioned earlier. I think we're seeing in the NFL a uh, change in guard, right? You have the old regime that want to keep players – just focus on football, play football, don't get on social media, don't talk, don't do anything. And you have the new generation of players that have a voice, that have social media, that want to be charismatic and characters. Like, for instance, why would the Giants even entertain trading Odell Beckham Jr.? Because they want to be able to try and control the narrative and what is being said. You cut the punter who has a voice and is active. You have coaches talking about Josh Rosen. So I think there's this clash, and we'll see who wants to talk about that again, but they should. They you, should know what I like, you know what I hate about coaches sometimes? <laughs> they actually think they're the smartest thing on the field of course. and on the court. But they don't realize 95% of the shit you know as a coach, you learned it from someone coaching you. Like, so you don't really actually have an identity for yourself. Yeah. Like, I see plays in an NBA as a play. I'm like, why the fuck do you call that play? That is a dumb play. It's a, it's a zipper up. Can we, it's a zipper up play. Yeah. Like, if coaches see how stupid this play is, no coach would ever call it less than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> These are so, players. 
that's a pin, and that's not going to work on there. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so, like, you've seen zipper-ups, right, where they zipper up the best player. Yeah. So if they're taking the ball out of bounds right here, this guy is coming to screen down, he zippers up. Yeah. Right? All these coaches, the best of the best, call this play. And as a player, it's like, why are you call- – this is the stupidest – like, first of all, the rim is here. I'm supposed to be going downhill, not away from the rim. So you're zipping me up. Now, if I'm a fast guy and they pass me the ball and I'm going this way, you neutralize my speed. So if I had an advantage. You're going away from the back. Yeah, because I'm going away to catch the ball. Now it's going to take me at least two seconds to turn my momentum back to go that way. Now you're forcing me to shoot a three. And and that's what I look at like, why are you doing stupid plays like that in this day? But you never learned it. You learned what that coach did that you played for. Now you're doing it like. You're duplicating. Yeah, and you're. The pick and roll has been the bread and butter of every NBA team but because, for like decades now. Sure. That's Houston. But, that, but not, not, right not, in the, not in the end of the game. Like, the end of the game, like, it's isolation you, want, you want your star player somewhere around here coming this way. Yeah. You don't want him coming up. Now if he gets jammed, now he has to try to figure out how to turn. Now you're forcing him to shoot a three. You want him to come downhill. But you see all these Hall of Fame coaches that's doing the same plays because someone taught them. Yeah. They did it in their roster, and it's like, you guys are just morons. Yeah. Grizzlies, Clippers need a coach. Yeah, last la- last two minutes, <laughs> last three minutes of the first, last you three minutes. A disaster as a head oh, coach. Oh, can you imagine? Oh. Marines as a head coach. <laughs> no, no, you la- la- after look, twenty games. They last, you be the head coach. Last three minutes of a game. Last three minutes of game. Everyone subs. That's you your, ask. That's yeah. your mantra. No, no. It'd be like, you're like, why do you sub your best players at the last three minutes of the game? No one knows why they do it, but they do it, not knowing that. That is the bread and butter of your best player. The last three minutes, they're in a penalty. He's been getting hit all game. This is a time where he gets to penalize every team. So like a James Harden. Yeah. He can average 10 points just in the last, just in the last three minutes of the game because now you got a guy who loves contact. Now you can't touch him because he's going to go to the free throw line. Now your big man doesn't want to protect that rim because he's going to get a foul. foul, foul. Just in three minutes of play, you can have this guy score 10, 15 points. But he's on a bench and some bench player who's just trying to warm up is sitting there chucking threes because he's, <laughs> he's too cold to shoot. But little shit like that irritates the shit out of me from these coaches. It doesn't mean, like yeah, that, yeah. You see? It's like, what's the point? <laughs> sub him out. Sub him out. I guess then, like, any freak injury could happen, too. Then you, what? <laughs> Man, well, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you miss it. What if hey, our, our cameraman Rihanna, got it? So this is your Rihanna right here. What about our man? Rihanna, man? Somebody has to film our Rihanna, man. He, I told you Rihanna was in the building. Got the oh, April, my. Goodness. Had the April Fools for you, you man. Look, you know, you look look Rihanna Rindis. <laughs> That oh, is that man. is a hey, you know, that, hey, that's the best time. Hey, how you how doing? You doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is that is that's that was bad. That was bad. Kai, you are a very ugly woman in that outfit. <laughs> it is crazy. Shout, shout out to the staff right here, man. That's the latest uh, of Out of Bounds. For Adam Caporell, Tara Owens, Gilbert Arenas. Oh, I'm Pierre Simpson. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Out of Bounds. <laughs>、Say、some wild、at? shit after the post game and get fired. Oh, yeah, I do that. But yeah, that's, 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 that ain't got nothing to do with my, what's going to be happening with that team. I'm, I'm not、thriving. saying you can't scheme something. I'm saying that he would do e x t r a c u r r i c u l a r that would get you in trouble. Our plays would be unreal. Yo, when they said, we'll be scoring 130. When they said he was going to be the Arizona、yeah. coach, I was like,、huh? oh, he's、yeah. paying players. You got to have the roster to have 130. No. What? All I need is one guy who can get fouled. Oh, man. <laughs> you look, why your wig going backwards, though? I don't know. He said, I don't know. You look like Odell Beckham right there. Nah, come on. He does. Shit, he really does. Yeah. Yo, he do kind of had a Beckham hair, though. He kind of does. OBJ、like、in the building.